Welcome to learning to engineer. In this video, we are going to talk about two port networks. In the previous videos of this channel, you would have watched the basic concepts in networks, basic concepts in measurements, some network theorems, mesh analysis, node analysis and so on. We will apply all these concepts in this two port networks. Let's get started. A two port network has two ports, one input port, one output port. So before we study all these two port networks, why do we actually study them? It is one method of network reduction technique, just like your Thevenin's and Norton's theorem. What is the difference between those theorems and that? We will look into that. When we have a stabilizer connected to a load, let's say a AC or let's say a refrigerator, we can replace this stabilizer circuit by a box called as a two port network. It receives the supply from the input mains, it does something to that uh, power that it receives and it sends a proper uh, safe signal to our load. This can be uh, considered as a two port network because this stabilizer is there between the power source and the load. It doesn't supply power on its own, it uses the power that is sent to it by the AC mains to this load, it may be AC or it may be refrigerator or anything. Where do we exactly apply this? In a place where we have to reduce a complex network into simple schemes of resistors which will be used for our, for our analysis to understand what impedance this two port network imposes on the load, to understand what impedance the load imposes on the stabilizer. For these kind of analysis exactly we use this two port network. It is not just to reduce one big network into one small network. So for that we have Thevenin's and Norton's theorem. In Thevenin and Norton's theorem what we do? We reduce a complex network into a simple source and a simple resistor. According to Thevenin's theorem we replace that complex network by a single voltage source in series with a single resistance and this will be connected in series to the load. If the same thing is in parallel setup with the current source, this is called as a Norton's theorem, right? So what is the difference between both of them? There is one important thing. What we are trying to achieve by reducing it? If we are trying to understand the behavior of this box with the load and what, what impedance it, up, it sends and what input, how much of input you should supply in order to get so much of output. Those things kind of analysis will be done using two port networks. But when you use Thevenin or Norton theorem, you can only reduce that into a simple power supply with a, C, with a series internal resistance or a parallel Norton resistance. Correct? With all these, we can't understand the, how this network interacts with the load. All these kind of uh, uh, things will be studied by two port network. If you want to study the impedance interaction, you use Z parameters. If you want to understand the admittance conditions, we will use Y parameters. If you want to understand how much of input will amplify into so much of output, we use the uh, H parameter model. And we use the ABCD parameter model to understand what percentage of input transfers to what percentage of output. Okay, so all these things we will be discussing in this video. In the future videos, I will be discussing more on Z parameters, Y parameters separately and we will see some problems also. Okay, now let us see what a port is and what a node is. In a, when I say that this is a port, it means that the current that is sent into this port is same as the current that leaves this port. The current that is sent into this port is same as the current that leaves this port. Okay, and in a two port network, we have some equations. Uh, in all of them, the currents I1 and I2 are entering the port. Okay, make a note of that. Okay. So what is a node? Let us say you have a node like this and you have two currents that is entering this node and one current that is leaving this node. Let us call the entering currents as I1 and I2 and the leaving currents as I3. So according to Kirchhoff's current law, what is I3? I3 is equal to sum of the currents I1 and I2. I1 plus I2. Okay, so this is what a node is and this is what a port is. Both terms are not interchangeable. Okay, 
so in analyzing all this we make use of the input voltage input current output voltage and output current we have four methods of analyzing it one is z parameters next is y parameters the other one is hybrid and transmission parameters in a z parameter network we analyze that in terms of the input and output voltage expressed as a function of the input and output currents i1 and i2 okay so since it follows uh, ohm's law this constant is called as impedance it is uh, it is z the equations are v1 will be z11 into i1 plus z12 into i2 v2 is equal to z21 into i1 plus z22 into i2 so the voltages are expressed as a function of current where this is the input impedance this is the output impedance these two are transfer impedances z21 and z12 z12 is the transfer impedance from the input port to the output port z21 is the transfer impedance from the output port to the input port okay if z12 is same as z21 then it is said that the network is reciprocal network whatever impedance is sent from the input port to the output port is same as the impedance that is sent from the output port to the input port okay this is called as a reciprocal network so these are z parameters now let's talk about y parameters or admittance parameters so in y parameters we will be expressing the input and the output currents as a function of voltages so i1 and i2 are expressed as a function of v1 and v2 so the equations are i11 is equal to y11 v1 plus y12 v2 i2 will be y21 into v1 plus y22 into v2 where this is the input impedance y11 transfer admittance y21 and y22 and then y22 will be the output admittance we all know one thing impedance is the inverse of admittance correct we all know this if i have a resistor of let us say 5 ohm the conductance or the admittance is 1 by 5 and the unit is cm okay so when i say that is is it 1 1 the inverse of y 1 1 can i say that y 1 1 is the is it of is the inverse of is it 1 1 can i say that just have this question aside keep thinking on it by the end of the video you will be able to answer this okay now we will look into the impedance parameters separately what is z11 to find out z11 we need to make i2 as zero so only when i2 is zero this portion of this term this the second part of the term vanishes so thereby z11 will be v1 divided by i1 is it 11 is equal to v1 divided by i1 when i2 is equal to 0 okay so what is is it 12 is it 12 is equal to similarly to find out is it 12 you need to make is it you mean you need to make i1 as 0 so that is at 1 2 is v1 divided by i2 then i1 is 0 so similarly what is z21 is a 21 will be v2 divided by i1 when i2 is 0 
So in finding all these Z parameters, we are making any one of the currents zero, either the input port current or the output port current. So the Z parameters are called as open circuit parameters. They are also called as open circuit parameters. Okay. So in order to find out y11, what we have to do? We have to kill this term. How can we do that? By making V2 as 0. When we make V2 as 0, Y11 will be I1 divided by V1. Y11 will be I1 divided by V1 when V2 is equal to 0. So similarly, what is Y12? Y12 will be I1 divided by V2 when V1 is 0. Correct? I1 divided by V2 when this term is 0. So what is y21? y21 is equal to i2 divided by v1 when v2 is 0 and what is y22? y22 is equal to i2 divided by v2 when v1 is 0. Okay. So these are the z parameters, these are the y parameters. When we find out the y parameters, we made either of the voltages 0. V2, V1, V2, V1. Okay. So, we are short circuiting either of the ports in order to find out Y parameters. So, they are called as short circuit parameters. Okay. So, now can you answer this question? Is Y11 the inverse of Z11? This is not correct. Why? Because Z11 is V1 divided by I1 when I2 is 0. Y111 is I1 divided by V1 when V2 is 0. So, when we are trying to find out any of the Z parameters, if we are open circuiting either of the loops. So, when we find Z11 which is I1 by V1, so the, it is just the input impedance looking from this perspective okay we will make i2 as 0 we will open circuit this port and look at the network from the in this perspective and find out is at one point i'll explain you with an example i hope these equations are like no longer needed consider this network in this network we have one resistance let us call this as RA, RB, this is RC and this is RD. So this is my port 1, this is my port 2, okay. V1 is supplied here and I1 enters this network, okay. This is I2. So when I am trying to find I, is it 1, 1. I will make I2 as 0, right? So, when I make I2 as 0, what will happen? RC will become series with RD because no current is entering here. RC will be series with RD. When I pass this current I1, I1 will enter via RA, it will split into RB and RC plus RD. So, the, power, the effective resistance would be RA plus RB in parallel with RC plus RD. This would be the current's path. This is how the current will travel in the circuit. Okay. When I find out Z11, this will be the thing. Okay. So, when I am finding out Y11, let us see what happens. Now, we were open circuiting this, uh, this output port. So, in order to find out Y11, what we will do? We will short circuit the output port v2 is 0 okay when we short circuit in order to make v2 as 0 what will happen how will the current travel the current will enter the circuit via ra it will split into rb and rc through this short the current which enters through this short will circulate back into the source no current will pass through rd so therefore the current's path would be RA plus 
RB in parallel with RC alone. RD will have no meaning. Okay, because no current is going to pass into this. This if this resistance will not have any significance when I am finding Y11. Okay, so what is Y11? Y11 will be 1 divided by RA plus RB in parallel with RC. Is this same? This is what is Z11. This is what is Y11. Are both of them same? No. Because when I am short circuiting, the topology is different. When I am open circuiting, the topology is different. We cannot say that Y11 is the inverse of Z11. Or Y22 is the inverse of Z11 or so on. Any of these parameters are not the respective inverses. But, but the overall Y matrix is the inverse of Z matrix. Okay. The overall Y matrix which is, I will write it, uh, somewhere here. This matrix inverse will be the Y matrix. Y11, Y12, Y21, Y22. This is correct. Whereas this is wrong. Okay. When I am finding the overall matrix, this will be the inverse of this matrix. Okay. Now we saw Z and Y parameters. Let us now see the hybrid and transfer parameter, transmission parameters. Mostly you will be using uh, the impedance and admittance parameters only in circuits or maybe sometimes in analog. But you will be using majority of hybrid parameters in analog circuits. When you are studying a solid state device, uh, BJT, MOSFET, their, uh, their biasing characteristics, how the circuits behave as an amplifier. To analyze all of them, you will be using hybrid parameters. Let us now see hybrid parameters. You will be majority using this hybrid parameters. You will be mostly using this hybrid parameters in solving the problems in biasing of BJT, biasing of MOSFET, mostly in solid state devices. Okay. So, what is hybrid parameters? In hybrid parameters, we express the input voltage and output current that is V1 and I2 as a function of I1 and V2. V1 is equal to H11 I1 plus H12 V2. I2 will be H21 I1 plus H22 V2. Okay, this is what is hybrid parameters. We will solve a couple of problems to understand this. So, similar to Z and Y parameters, we can find out H11, H21, H22 and H22 in terms of the other parameters. Okay, this is hybrid parameters. Next, we will see transmission parameters. In transmission parameters, we will be expressing the output in terms of the input. How much output we have to get in terms of V2 and I2? In terms of the inputs, V1 and I1. So, therefore, V2 and I2 are expressed as a function of V1 and I1. Okay. V2 is equal to AV1 plus B into I1. I2 is equal to CV1 plus D into I1. These are called as ABCD parameters. Okay, so similarly just like how we found out the Z parameters individually, we can find out the value of H11, H12, H21 and H22 by making either of the terms 0. So first, what is H11? V1 divided by I1 when V2 was 0. H12 is equal to V1 divided by V2 when I1 was 0. So, here in order to find out H11, 
we are short circuiting the output port making v2 zero to find out h12 we are making i1 as zero we are open circuiting the input port okay so what is h21 i2 divided by i1 when v2 is zero h22 is equal to i2 divided by v2 when i1 is zero okay so we are going to find out the voltage and the current gain by this these uh, concepts will be exp will be useful for you when you are studying the biasing of bjt okay so these are mostly useful in solid state devices now we will see abcd parameters or transmission parameters so similarly how we will find out a we will make this term zero by making i1 as zero so a is equal to v2 divided by v1 when i1 is zero what is b b will be v2 divided by i1 when v1 is zero so similarly i uh, am I will write C and D. I will write C and D here. So what is C and D? C is equal to I2 divided by V1 when I1 is zero. And what is D? D is equal to I2 by I1. D is I2 by I1 when V1 is zero. So these are transmission parameters. You you just make a note of these equations. Once we solve problems, these will be useful for you. Okay, let's have a quick summary of the introduction to two port networks. We first saw what a port is, what a node is, and what is the difference between them. Then we saw why we need to go to two port analysis because we need to understand the behavior of this box with the load. So to understand the transfer impedance and other parameters like current gain and so on, how this box reacts to the load, we go for two port networks. We saw that. Then we saw four methods of analysis: Z, Y, hybrid, and transmission parameters. Just make a note of all these equations. In the next videos, we'll be solving problems in these. So during that time, these concepts will be helpful to you. If you have any doubts in these concepts, please type that down in the comment section, or you can mail to learning to engineer at gmail dot com. If you have any particular doubt, or if you have any particular topic in your mind which has to be featured in this channel, if you want me to help you with some of your concepts, you can just uh, type a mail, or you can just type it down in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Learning to Engineer for more updates, and don't forget to ring the notification bell so that once I publish my next video, it will be there on your phone. Thank you.